All right, welcome everybody to our um, CCCOER um, Open Education Week celebration. Um, this is our fourth session in our tour de force of OER degree and adoption showcases. Um, and this one is a little different than the previous three that we've heard about. Um, this is from Maricopa Millions in Arizona, which I know many of you have heard about their wonderful work around OER and saving money for their students. Um, and they've taken a little bit different path. Um, they've gone more for OER adoption than a degree at this point. That might be something they'll pursue in the future, but they're, um, they have significantly impacted um, student savings, um, in, improved teaching and learning, and uh, Matthew Bloom, um, who is their um, OER faculty in residence, will tell you more about that. All right, Matthew. Okay, well, thank you everybody for um, giving me this opportunity to share what we've been doing here. You know, Maricopa Millions, um, as Una said, a lot of people have heard about it and, you know, we've, we've been sharing, it, you know, our work for the last five years and it was initially started as a way of um, trying to harness some of the energy that we had um, from both faculty and in administration at our district when it came to open education, um, you know, several years ago. Um, we've had a lot of people who helped to develop, um, you know, a lot of improvements to Math AS and My Open Math and also some um, individual people who had done research studies and things like that. So um, all of this work that, that had been done and all this interest, um, it seemed like a great opportunity so um, the, the project basically began as with the with the purpose as Una said of of encouraging faculty to adopt OER and there were a number of ways that we went about doing that um, before I get into all that for those of you who aren't familiar with Maricopa um, as, as Una said we're, we're in Arizona it's in the Phoenix area so it's the greater Phoenix area uh, it's a very large municipal area we have 10 colleges that are all connected under uh, this the single Maricopa district and we serve about 200,000 students a year um, and so the, the project had the opportunity because it's such a big system it, the project really had the opportunity to have a great impact and I think that that we have had that um, I have only really been involved in the project for uh, the last three years and as Una said um, I just recently became um, Maricopa's first OER faculty in residence um, and so and I, I'll get to that in a moment so I think where I wanted to, to kind of start here was just this general idea um, of kind of how the how the um, project works and I apologize my voice sounds a little hoarse I've been recovering from uh, a little bit of a cold but um, so the idea was to incentivize faculty to develop revise remix and adopt o OER by leveraging funds committed by the administration to call for proposals to create course content focusing on um, you know sections or courses that had the highest enrollments so the ones that we wanted to try to uh, fund were you know English 101 and 102 um, some of the some of the uh, 100 level math courses uh, psychology 101 so these courses that really are, are the big you know kind of uh, high enrollment courses for our district we wanted to fund those first and um, the idea was to try to engage faculty faculty from multiple colleges and get them working collaboratively as well. Um, collaboration had a huge impact on it. Um, this slide here shows just a few of the, um, in fact, I think these might be all of the disciplines that we have funded the courses um, or under which we funded courses. And all of the courses that we funded are ultimately going to be shared through Canvas Commons, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, but so, so this is all, this will all be publicly available. In fact, a lot of them are already, I think there's like 16 of the courses are already publicly available through Canvas Commons. Canvas is the learning management system that our district uses um, at nine of its 10 colleges. So the goal of Maricopa Millions was to fund these courses here and to promote faculty awareness of OER in other ways as well. And then a little bit later on in the project, we also uh, started to transition even more to the student awareness aspect, um, just kind of piggybacking off of what we just heard in the last session, um, the students, you know, communicating the value of, of saving on textbook costs and the value of using OER is, is really important. And that's something that we're, we're shifting to here. Um, 
But going back, uh, the idea was to remove the cost and access barriers associated with traditional textbooks and publisher subscription codes um, by supporting the faculty adoption of OER. And the explicit goal was um, financial primarily uh, at the beginning. The goal was to save students $5 million over five years. And um, it has been pretty successful. I will tell you later how much total we have uh, saved because it was, it was it's, it's a lot. So, but the point is, is that, you know, this is not something that was a top-down uh, approach. The administration was extremely supportive, and there was a district-level committee uh, involved in leading this. We've had a, a tri-chair model, so there's there are representatives from as many of the colleges as we can get. Uh, usually, we have uh, not we have mostly faculty, but there are also instructional designers, library faculty on the committee. There's also um, you know we have one or two vice presidents of academic affairs, uh, and also. Uh, a couple of administrators, like a call, we have one of the college presidents and then um, another person who's like a, the dean of, of, of humanities at one of the colleges as well. So there's, there was a wide representation on that committee. And I think that one of the things that I want to try to do in the future is see if we can't get some representation from some of the student groups on, on one of the colleges as well. But um, so one of the reasons why, why I'm stressing that is because it's not just that we're funding these courses here, but we are, we are working together, like everyone at every level of, of the district, basically, from the top administration all the way down to individual faculty members who are, you know, their own, who are OER champions themselves. Uh, the idea was to use resources that are committed by supportive administration to help faculty adopt OER and do what they're passionate about when it comes to open education. And even if faculty didn't know anything about it, one of the things that uh, was built into our grant structure was a training. So basically the way that the, 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 that the training worked is that, I mean, faculty adoption of OER remains the single most important focus because of the impact that that can have in our mind. Um, now, I mean, the student aspect is really important too, and um, having the, the process of a, a Z degree is something that uh, we are uh, kind of working on differently at different colleges. Um, but the the point is, is that this overall purpose is really to look specifically at how we can we wanted to design a grant program by which faculty interested in transitioning to open resources would propose to develop their own course. Um, and like I said, we were heavily weighing high enrollment courses and cross college collaboration where we had three or more instructors from different colleges participating. Um, they were funded. Uh, with three overload hours each, and that was usually spread out over two semesters or three semesters, depending on their um, depending on their development process. And there were really three steps to the grant. Uh, so the first phase of the grant, or I should say, the first part of a participant's experience in the grant, um, was training. They were expected to complete some sort of training and uh, articulate like what. The resources they use. They were provided with a number of, um, you know, a number like a number of getting started links, including you know CCC OERs page, um, Creative Commons, OER Commons, BC Campus, OpenStax, Lumen. Um, before I was actually participating myself in Maricopa Millions, I mean, I was all, I was still Maricopa faculty and doing stuff with OER. I just wasn't on that committee until three years ago. But back in 2013, I got a grant. Uh, separate grant, this is a separate system within our college uh, district, but um, through the Maricopa Center for Learning and Instruction, I got a learning grant to develop um, an OER faculty workshop. And I've shared that with uh, CCC OER before, and I shared that at um, the Open Education Conference in 2015, I believe. Um, but that was also one of the kind of primary tools that faculty in our district were encouraged to complete. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a, it's a self-paced kind of automated, um, uh, yeah, it's like a self-paced MOOC basically that, that initiates faculty into how to use OER. And that's available on Canvas Network as a free MOOC too. Um, and so that was, that, that training aspect of it was um, in place because we wanted to make sure that the stuff that we were creating was obviously like legitimate in terms of its licensing, um, but you know, also we wanted to make sure that they had access to all the resources that they might need. And so uh, the, after the training section of it, the second part of the grant were um, 
the development of the course itself. And now developing the course could include, uh, we, were, we were actually okay with someone just saying, all right, we're not gonna use this economics textbook anymore, we're gonna use the OpenStax one, um, provided that they you know, incorporated it into the LMS and or the, into Canvas and then, you know, and, and sometimes what they would do is just kind of break it up so that it, it fit into separate modules or maybe develop some, um, you know, additional assessments or, or whatever things they needed. So it could be something like that. Um, and there were other courses that were developed that were a lot more ground up development I mean from scratch uh, and so that's something that we've kind of had some challenge with determining a, a, a better model for compensating um, faculty for the different kinds of work they're doing in, in terms of um, contributing to global open content uh, and that's something that I might talk about a little bit at the end when I discuss how we are um, changing our grant model um, and I think Maybe I, maybe I skipped this part, but uh, I, I might have said this, but over the last five years, Maricopa Millions has run its initial five-year course. Um, it was not intended to be a permanent uh, thing. It was intended to be a five-year goal, do this over five years, you're committed, you know, resources are committed for those five years. And this spring is the 10th semester of those five years. So um, as of spring 2018, Maricopa Millions has has run its course and we've had great success, um, not just from this uh, grant project here, but also because of um, some of the other things that we have been doing to encourage adoption. And um, one of those, like I mentioned earlier, is this idea of uh, making sure that we're actually sharing everything back. We didn't just want to house it within Maricopa's Candace and and pat ourselves on the back and say that we're, we look at us, we made OER and we share it with, with each other, but no one else. So fortunately, Canvas Commons was something we were able to, um, it was part of the Maricopa Millions project and a larger push within Maricopa to get Canvas Commons turned on. If you're not familiar with Canvas or Canvas Commons, basically what it is is a sharing mechanism. So, um, you know, any, basically anything in the Canvas L LMS can be very easily shared to Canvas Commons, either within just the Maricopa instance of Canvas or in the public version of Canvas. And so what we've done is we've encouraged all the faculty who, um, who developed courses in America of Millions to share those, you know, after the final vetting, because the third stage in the process, which I, I think I skipped as well, um, the, the, the second stage is developing the course, and then the third stage in the grant is the actual piloting of the course and some finalize, you know, finalization, um, tidying it up a little bit. And, you know, none of them are, are perfect, but uh, they're certainly helpful tools, and other faculty have already been using them and remixing them. Um, and so they were encouraged to share them, and uh, the search tag that you can can use if you have access to Canvas and, and you can even if you don't have Canvas as your LMS you can get a free Canvas account um, at I think it's Instructure is the the name of the company and so it's a free Canvas free for teachers account and um, what you can do is just search MMOER and it'll bring up all the courses that we've um, that we funded there and so we just you know we felt like that sharing was important, not just so that we could encourage faculty within our district to to use the material, but so that we were um, actually having the kind of global impact that that we want. Because saving students money, while that is the kind of really appealing to administration, uh, really appealing to certain stakeholders, obviously it is important to save money, and especially if you're a college student at a community college and you know it's like do I spend four hundred dollars on textbooks a semester or do I pay my first month's rent you know um, so yes that's valuable but there is this uh, as we uh, you know it's kind of preaching to the choir here but you know there's this whole other aspect of open education that has to do with this philosophy of, of contributing to the commons and um, that's something that is is definitely part of, of our philosophy as well um, so along those lines, I think that um, I just wanted to stress that as Maricopa Millions has developed, it has it has focused on saving students money and developing mechanisms for calculating that, but at the same time, um, thinking of his mission and, and more recently as we're beginning to evolve, uh, 
this this project is is now becoming institutionalized. I'm not sure if I really like that the use of that term for it, but that's how I've heard it described. But in the creation of this position that I that I've got for the first time, it's a faculty and residence position. So I remain English faculty um, at Scottsdale Community College, but for the next two to three years, I will be on full reassigned time uh, coordinating the district's open education initiatives. And I mean, that just is a demonstration of the of the value that that Maricopa sees in this project that they're going to assign that uh, that resource, you know, to um, to this thing. And one of the uh, one of my goals is to try to really stress this idea. And this I got from um, the Open Education Conference in 2017, which was one of the keynotes was Catherine Casserly, who's the former CEO of Creative Commons um, and program officer for the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. She listed the values of open education as freedom, transparency, equity, access, inclusion, and collaboration. And I think that, you know, obviously equity, access, uh, you know, cost savings fits into those things, but there's so much more that we can be doing. So that's part of what we'll be doing as we shift. But the ongoing goals that we have had had specifically had to do with student awareness, faculty awareness, and improving upon uh, the catalog of, of materials that we offer. And so when it comes to, so I've already kind of described the grant process and, and how much we funded in terms of the grants, but I wanted to also say a few words about some of the other things that we have done as well um, in order to promote faculty awareness across um, uh, across the district. So uh, adoption and adaptation of materials. We ha host OER events, uh, dialogue days. We usually pull, we get people to come in uh, from across the country. We've had um, uh, Preston Davis speak, David Wiley. Just um, last Friday, we had Rajiv Jangiani from BC campus. So it was, it's, um, and, and Quantin, Quantin Polytechnic Institute, who, and it was just an amazing day. So we have, we offer these opportunities for, fac for faculty to get that kind of OER recharge. Um, and again, the funding for that is, it's, it's collaborative funding coming from this, um, uh, administrative support and then we also leverage other support services uh, from, the, from the district and college level as well because you know there are so many people who are interested in OER it's kind of like the discussions that I have it, it almost doesn't in some ways it doesn't really matter your politics because like everyone has a reason to like OER and so you know everybody can see the value in it and you can have a lot of people helping you out um, We've also been utilizing um, our CTLs in college libraries. Um, in, in, like I said, we've had librarians on our steering committee and librarians, as, as we all know, um, are some of the greatest OER champions out there. And so we want to make sure that we're always including them in the conversations. Um, and we also invested some money in promotional items. Uh, and we've been promoting our website, which is uh, www.maricopa.edu forward slash OER. And at, at this moment, we're trying to, they, we just changed, the whole district just changed their website. So we're, we're looking for some additions to be made to it at present. But, um, but it is still an op a, a resource for pub the public in general, but also specifically students to kind of see what kind of work has been done with Maricopa Million. So we've been using, you know, the website, we've been using these events, we've been doing promotional um, materials, you know, like with pens and stuff like that to, to try to get people to, um, to really participate. Now, what I think is actually probably one of the most important things that Maricopa Millions did was, folk was get built into our class search this low cost or no cost filter for textbooks, if you see down here. Um, oops. So, um, what it is is that students can search for courses, but then when they click more options, they can actually filter out all the ones that are um, that are not using low cost materials. Now, this is not necessarily just OER. It could be somebody whose class is just a bunch of links to the New York Times or something like that. Um, but it is something that we put in place. It helps us also to calculate our uh, to, to calculate a cost savings estimate uh, because what we can do is we can basically run a report of all the sections that have this code associated with that uh, with them and based on that we have a fairly conservative way of estimating cost savings if we uh, if we basically say that you know there are 20 students in a class in fact most of our classes have more than 20 students in them but so 20 students a class and we uh, did a little bit of research and polling and um, the original team settled 
settled upon a hundred dollars as an average textbook price for a given course and I know textbook prices can range wildly so it's really difficult to tell but our calculation is 20 students per section times a hundred dollars per student times the number of sections and then that's how we estimate that savings and it's helpful for this this is helpful for students and for us and and it was one of the honestly one of the best tools that we have. But we've been uh, focusing a lot more on student awareness, like I already mentioned. Um, we've been kind of developed, we, we've got this image here spread through um, throughout the campuses, all different colleges and a lot of buildings and these little like little table tents that just kind of sit out there in the lobby and stuff like that. Um, and we've also been holding student awareness events where we've, we've borrowed the hashtag textbook broke. Um, this is an event at Paradise Valley Community College. Um, you know, this is a great opportunity because you get to kind of interact with students is a really unique way of interacting with students um, and uh, th this was an event that uh, Scott's <laughs> but you know t it's true though that, that there are all kinds of things that you can do with the money and it's not just a matter of oh I save money you know it actually is permitting some students to um, it, it can significantly improve their their lives during the semester and so that's obviously very important so all this stuff together basically has brought us up to, um, like I said, the end of, of Maricopa Millions in its current form. It's not ending. We are not stopping at any point. Uh, it's just evolving. And um, this is our final estimate. We set out to save $5 million over five years. And um, it looks like about $11.5 million is the final calculation there. And I can only stress that this cost savings is really much more than just the courses we funded or uh, even the work that we did with the awareness because a lot of this has to do with how, how that work maybe but also all these other little pockets of OER practice just popping up without us even knowing it are happening across our district. And we have a lot of faculty in this district and, and we uh, are constantly discovering something new that somebody's doing, uh, whether it's the results of a sabbatical or if it's the just somebody made a bunch of videos and we didn't even know about it and, and all of a sudden we discover that that's something that's happened. So, so it's not just, um, the grant project that created this, but it is nonetheless, I, I think something that, that we're, you know, really proud of sharing. Um, so that said, oh, and I was going to put this up here too. This isn't the most flattering um, graph here because you can see that there's a little bit of a dip there in 2017. I don't know if that's a general, um, I don't know if that's a general, uh, like enrollment issue or what but we're going to try to be focusing we're going to try to focus more on how to you know maintain that savings per semester and maybe even improve it as we move forward and so what we're going to be doing is rather than funding complete courses anymore we're really going to focus more on improving the content that, that we have and so um, because a, a lot of times faculty aren't really interested in adopting a complete course you know maybe somebody is if they're teaching it for the first time or if it's like a last minute thing but most faculty are more interested in having like a buffet you know so that they can kind of pick and choose the things that they want so what we want to do is make the most appealing spread possible and focus on improving accessibility incorporating culturally responsive and culturally sustaining pedagogies um, maximizing 5R permissions um, renewable assignments that kind of thing and that's that's gonna be the future of Maricopa Millions from here on out and I believe that is it <laughs> All right, thank you, Matthew. That, in fact, was a tour de force in itself. Um, and um, one question that you answered partially um, was in the chat window, and I'm not sure if it went out into the general chat window, was Canvas Commons. Um, do you want to speak just what uh, you have one minute left, so maybe just a, a really quick <laughs> reprisal of um, how people can get access to Canvas Commons? Yeah, so what you can do is. Um, is if you go to, I think it's Canvas, Canvas free for teachers. So you can get a free Canvas account um, and it's, uh, it's, I don't know which one, I'm, I'm kind of just randomly doing this here. But yeah, it, Canvas is, is, there's like the Maricopa Canvas, which you won't have access to unless you're, you know, a student or a faculty or staff. But um, if you're just a public person, then you can get a free Canvas account. And um, when you, after you enroll 
in uh, you get your free canvas account then you'll have access to canvas commons which is the search mechanism um, that's used and canvas commons looks something like this this is the Maricopa version of Canvas, but you'll see that um, provided our network works here. So yeah, so Canvas Commons, whether you're accessing this through the public Canvas or through um, whatever is, either your institution uses it, I, I imagine that you would still have access to it as well. Um, under the search, if you just do MMOER, okay, come on. I guess I'm not typing fast enough. There you go. MMOER, you'll see all of the different courses that, um, that Maricopa has uploaded for sharing. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much, Matthew. Um, we're going to uh, close the recording off now, but I'm going to ask Matthew to put his email in the chat window for anyone who'd like to follow up later. So thanks again, Matthew, for a wonderful presentation. And thank you to our audience for joining us.